Dawn and I, my wife Dawn and I, married in 1999. So we've been married almost 17 years. And in November, we got married in uh, the following July of 2000 is when I got the job and I moved to Connecticut. We moved to Connecticut. Well, right after we got married, Dawn and I made a decision that we wanted to try and start a family right away, fairly quickly. That was both, in our, both of our desires to be parents and we wanted to, um, wanted to go that route. So that was our hope, that was our prayer, even though we weren't Christians at the time. You know, we were probably praying to a God that we didn't really know too well, but we were definitely praying for that. And it didn't happen. First six, seven, eight months, it didn't happen. You're kind of like, okay, it's gonna happen, no big deal. We moved to Connecticut. Still nothing. And it got to the point where we were both very angry with this God that we didn't even know, which is kind of weird to say, right? That we're angry with God, yet we didn't even put our faith and trust in him necessarily or understand what he was about. But we were telling him, we're not happy with you right now, God. This isn't, this isn't the plans that we have. Our plan right now is to be parents. And I have two younger brothers who both got married um, after us, and they both had children very quickly. So watching that was very difficult. We would walk, you know, Dawn and I would go out to dinner, or we'd go wherever, and we'd see people who had babies or people who were pregnant, and we would both become very bitter. We'd both kind of make snark remarks to each other. It was our only way of really dealing with it at the time. We'd just be like, they got three kids, lucky them. And it was very, very difficult to walk through. You know, we were seeing people who were having kids and didn't really want them. That was hard. And, uh, you know, we could even go deeper, but I'm not going to. But there are situations where we were watching and we were like, God, what is, what's going on here? Because they're having this uh, experience, if you will, or this moment that we're desiring to have and we're not getting it. Fast forward a little bit. In May of 2001, Mother's Day actually, so last week, 15 years ago, I sat in a room in my brother's house and talked to him for about a half hour and he shared with me the gospel for the first time. And it was, amazing. it was an amazing moment and listening to him kind of talk and explain what Jesus was about, what the cross was about, what salvation was about, what it meant to, to live in eternity with him and what this whole thing was about. And I accepted Christ that day. It was awesome. It was a great moment. But in my back pocket or in my back of my brain, I guess I should say, I really wasn't accepting Christ into my heart because that was the right thing to do or I was felt moved by the Spirit. I was doing it because I wanted this genie that is God, I wanted to rub it and I wanted the genie to come out and I wanted him to grant me my wish of having a child. That was the reason I originally became a Christian because I was hoping and praying that if I got God on my side and I had this whole Christian thing going on then of course he was gonna answer my prayers, my prayers of giving us a child. God doesn't work like that exactly. <laughs> that didn't quite happen. But that was my hope and that was the motive. And you know, it took about a year from the time I, I sat in that room with my brother to where I tried to I tr started to truly understand what it meant to die on the cross and what that meant to, for Jesus and, the, and God and how much he loved us and what salvation truly meant, what it meant to be a Christian. It took about a year. Because I kept thinking, okay, God, you know, I'm a Christian now. Where's this child happening? It still wasn't happening. And it got to the point where Dawn and I went to the doctors, and we were having the doctor try to figure out what the problem was and why it wasn't happening and why it wasn't working. And like I said, a year in is when I finally started to get what this whole faith thing was about. And there came a point where I remember telling my wife, and this was hard. I said, Dawn, maybe it's not God's will for us to be parents. Maybe that's not in his plan. But I had to come to this point where I understood that it, this prayer that I was praying, this hope, this want that we both had, it's our prayer and it's our want and it's our need, but it may not be God's plan. Now God's plan says, you saw in Jeremiah, that he wants a plan for us to have a hope and a future, plans for good, not for failure, not for evil. Well, I felt like this, none of this was good. This wasn't a hope and a future. This was... This was just this moment where we were hitting this brick wall with nothing happening. And it got to a point where we went to the doctors and our insurance, my insurance uh, at work, allowed us to have three treatments to try and get pregnant. And we went through two treatments and nothing took. And it was very 
uh, hard for us to watch that happen. Two treatments, nothing happens. And there came a point in that time where both my brothers, like I said, were having kids. So watching them have kids and you're so excited and you're an uncle again. Hey, it's Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay is an uncle again for the third time. Here we go. And it's like Dawn and I are like, man, I don't know. This is, just isn't fair. Life isn't fair. So August of 2003, we have one more chance at this. And I said, Dawn, I said, we have to come to a point where we have to be willing to just say, God, do what you got to do here. And if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. And this is hard because there are moments in life where we can kind of control, control things a little bit. We can control things that happen, right, in, in terms of the worldly control of it. But this is mom the moment where we have zero control. No control. We can do everything we want to do. And if it's not happening, it's not going to happen. One more time. Let's just do it. And if it doesn't take, it doesn't take. And so we, we go through the process. And it, was, it took about a month or two, month and a half or so before the test results came in. And my wife at the time was working a day shift, and I was working the night shift. So I'm home during the day, and the phone rings, and I answer it. And I go, hello? Yeah, and this is, this is Dr. So-and-so's office. We have some news for you. I'm like, OK. I'm like, congratulations. Your wife is pregnant. And I was like, are you serious? Very simply. <laughs> so I remember the doctor telling me that, that Dawn is pregnant. And I'm like, this is awesome. Thank you so much. I hung up the phone. and. I, I, I froze, and then I just dropped to my knees, and I cried like a two-year-old when his toy was taken away. I was so overwhelmed, and I was so thankful because that was the first time in my life, and really one of the only moments in terms of like that deep and that powerful where God truly just covered my body with his spirit, and I lost it. And I just went to my knees and praised him and thanked him and lost it. Cried, I, I cried more when I found out Dawn was pregnant than when my daughter was actually born. More, way more, because it was such a process, such a difficult process just to even get pregnant, much less having the child. So guess what? Then I got to call Dawn. I found out my wife's pregnant before she did. Can you imagine that? It's not how the world works, guys. We're not supposed to know that stuff before them. But that's how it worked. And so I get finally 15 minutes. I get myself together. I call Dawn. And very, very, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I just remember the words, we did it! You know, like I screamed it. And she's probably on the phone like, uh, thank you, Mr. Romano, but I'm at work right now and I'll be back to you soon. It's like, she couldn't go as crazy as I could because she's, in her, she's at her desk in her office. Uh, but when we got home, man, we hugged and partied and we were so thankful and so grateful that it worked out. But man, what a difficult time to walk through that situation together. And, and there is a happy ending, thank God. You know, that we were able to get pregnant. And then the hard part began because you got to wait another nine months, right? So nine months later, uh, Sarah was born. Sarah was born June 6, 2004. She's our miracle child, as I call her. She's our only child. We're grateful. We're thankful that we were able to become parents. And, you know, I give God, obviously, God all the glory and all the praise. But, man, what a horrible, difficult situation to walk through. I'm glad that there is a happy ending, and I can tell you guys this and smile.